Part 4 Kilmartin I leave the Isle of Harris via the ferry port at Tarbert and sail over to Uig, a small town in the Isle of Skye. The sea is calm and I watch a Manx shearwater skim across the surface of the North Minch. These birds are nesting just now, but in July they will start their migration to the shores of South America, almost five and a half thousand miles away. I stay with a friend in Uig and then drive down to the Crinan Canal, a man-made stretch of water that cuts out the need to go all the way around the entire peninsula. The next day, I visit the primary school at Kilmartin, where the four children in Primary 7 tell me all about the Ring of Stones, a mere 500 yards from the school. They show me some of the artefacts found around the stones, axe heads, arrowheads, from almost 5,000 years ago. Here are some of the children telling me about these amazing finds in their own words. I mean, can you tell us a little bit about this, this spearhead? You know, where was it found? Um, I think, was it at Temple Road? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, Temple Road. And I think it's pretty big, isn't it? It's still sharp, oh, I guess, as well, so yeah. be careful. And it's made out of, what do you know? Flint. 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 Yeah. And yeah. how old is it, do you think? Um, I'm not sure. I guess... Yeah, the stones are what about five thousand years old. Yeah, yeah, the stones. Are. So they uh, might be pretty old. Then. So this is show, show me the arrowhead. Um, yeah, this is an arrowhead. I think. I think this was found at Temple as well. Right. Oh, I'm from there. Uh, where's this now? I think that's an arrowhead too. Maybe, oh, right. Or something, there'd be some kind of things for like it's quite sharp at the skinning end. animals and things as well. Sometimes. Oh, right, yeah. Mm. We also looked at some of the poems from the Isle of Lewis. The children there produced a bilingual book of poems inspired by the Callanish stones. The poems are set out in English and in Gaelic. Here is one of the children at Kilmartin reading a poem. This inspired the children at Kilmartin to work in their own poems. Okay, Todd is going to read The Screaming Stone. Mm -hmm. okay. The Screaming Stone. I am a stone with a face, screaming in the wind. There are some tall and small, rough and smooth around me. Lots of lovely stones with mosses and shapes, and a hole for your feet. There is one like an elf, and giants, big and small. There is a lot to see here. Ben's going to read a, a poem called The Big One. I am a big stone looking down on the others. Who put me up? Who put the stones in the circle? Those going down to the bottom. I am in charge of every one. Through the years I have been standing here as a king in charge of everything. I am big. I am heavy. Hearing the wind, the cars and the people. Some people shout. Others scream and cry. I am here with with a very sore head. The children at Kilmartin had already prepared some stories based around the Standing Stone theme. Here is one called The Thirteen Men and the Thief, read by Nina. The Thirteen Men and the Thief. One misty night in Kilmartin Glen, 486 BC, a thief was roaming the quiet houses looking for precious stones, rocks and metalwork as silent as a mouse. Ah! There was an ear-piercing scream and people shouting, Thief! Thief! So the thief ran as fast as he could, but he was out of luck. Thirteen men were running after him with bronze knives. The thief swerved down trees and jumped over rocks, then miraculously stopped, still as stone. He knew something was going to happen. He had lost them. The desperate thief was puffing and panting when suddenly there was a crack in the bushes and out came one of the men and the thief looked around and all thirteen people were in a nearly, nearly a perfect circle around him, staring at him. There was silence within them. The thief fell to the ground and laid there. Suddenly, a bright light shone into thirteen men's eyes, and they all turned to rocks. But the thief stayed as flesh, because his eyes were tight shut, and they stayed that way 
for, for the rest of his life because he didn't see the damage he had done. So the last thing he saw was the 13 men that are now rocks coming out of the ground. That's why 13 is an unlucky number and that's how the standing stones appeared because they were the last men standing. Remember, there's a competition to find the best one-page story using a ring of stones as a starting point. Strident Publishing will supply a pack of children's books to the winning school. After this truly amazing visit to Kilmartin Primary, I see a hare racing across the field before I reach Temple Woods. Once I reach the stone circle, I am surprised to see that the centre is filled with much smaller stones. There are two stone circles at Temple Wood. From the northern one you could watch the midwinter sunset, and from the southern you could observe the winter full moon. Features and Creatures Today's feature is flint, a hard form of quartz, found as nodules in much lighter stones, such as limestone or chalk. It splits into very thin, sharp shards, which can be used for all manner of cutting tools. When struck against steel, it can produce a spark or even start a fire. Today's creature is the hare. Hares are related to rabbits, but live more solitary lives. They typically have longer ears and can run very fast, almost 50 miles an hour. They don't have burrows, but they live in a nest above the ground called a forum. A young hare, less than one year old, is called a leveret. Here are today's challenge questions. Number one. I visited the Crinan Canal. Can you name another canal in Scotland? Question two. The children at Kilmartin showed us some axe and arrowheads. What were they made of? Question three. There are two types of hair in Scotland. Can you name them? Question four. What is a young hare called? Bye for now.